One of the major plot points of The Lord of the Rings is that Sauron cannot be defeated conventionally. Why can he not be defeated conventionally? There's a few reasons, but the biggest reason is his powerful armies. They're so powerful that there is simply no way he can be defeated through force of arms. So let's jump right into it. How powerful were Sauron's armies during the War of the Ring? As you've heard me say plenty of times before, Tolkien is very scarce when it comes to giving numbers. He preferred descriptive words such as large, vast, massive, huge, big, you get the point. This means I had to do quite a bit more research to reach numbers I was happy with. But at the same time, when you're dealing with numbers and the hundreds of thousands, you have a lot more room for error. As a result, I can't give certain numbers, so all of my numbers will be guesstimates using information from the books. In other words, my numbers are non-canon, so don't quote them as fact. And in this video, I will also be giving estimates of the army sizes of Sauron's allies. So the Easterlings, the Haradrim, and the Corsairs of Umbar. To put it bluntly, there simply isn't enough information to do an entire video on each of these peoples, as we know so little about Rune and Harad. If I were to do separate videos, they would either be really short, or would require me to make up a lot of shit. Now, I'm all for fanfiction, but I want to keep a factual basis for these videos. So I'm wrapping them all up in this video, and I'll give an estimation of how many of them fought during the War of the Ring as well. Let's start with Mordor, which I'll be splitting into Mordor proper, Dol Guldur, and Minas Morgul. I'll start with the Morgul army, which is the army that fought at the Battle of Pelennor Fields. There was only one real clue on the size of this army. When Faramir's forces retreating from Osgiliath to the Causeway Forts, it's said that he is ten times outnumbered. This doesn't exactly help as we're unsure how many men Faramir commanded, but if you've watched my Gondor army size video, then I estimated Faramir's force to be around 3 to 4,000, which means he faced 30,000 foes at the minimum. But this number also includes Haradrim, which I'm not counting as part of the Morgul army. So a minimum of the Morgul army might be around 30 to 40,000. So what would be the maximum? Well, the Morgul army was heavily supplemented by forces from Sauron's allies. And although the army was large enough to take Osgiliath and siege Minas Tirith, it was not so large that it could not be defeated by the forces of Gondor and Rohan in the field, which really numbered no more than 15,000 across the entire length of the battle. If I had to put a maximum on the Morgul army, I'd say 100,000, but I think the number was far lower, probably around 60 to 70,000. This seems to be Minas Morgul's maximum force as the city was emptied after the battle. Moving on, we have Dol Guldur. Now, with Dol Guldur we get zero hints, and we can only use the information on Dol Guldur's status during the War of the Ring. It was Sauron's chief fortress in the north, and from Dol Guldur five separate attacks were launched. Three on Lorien, one on the Woodland Realm, and one on Rohan. However, one must also remember that Dol Guldur had been abandoned by Sauron during the quest for Erebor, and he had only reoccupied it in at 2951, a mere 70 years before the War of the Ring. So it's unlikely that the fortress was exceptionally powerful, the attack on Rohan seemed to be a little more than a raid, as it was quickly defeated by the Ents, so I doubt that force numbered more than 3,000. As for the attacks on Lothlorien and the Woodland Realm, we can only guess. Considering Lothlorien was the home of Galadriel, I'm assuming Sauron saw it as a greater threat, hence why he launched three assaults. At a minimum, I'm expecting each of these assaults were 10,000 strong. As for the assault on Thranduil's people, I'm guessing it was a far larger, singular army, probably numbering around 20,000. Combining all of these forces together gets a total of around 53,000, give or take a few thousand, which I'd say is pretty reasonable total when speaking of Dol Guldur. My original estimates had this number almost 50% higher, but I revised them on account of Dol Guldur only having 70 years to rebuild its strength. Now we move on to Mordor proper. Once again, we receive only a few clues, but we know for certain that this is where the vast majority of Sauron's forces were located. During the Siege of Gondor, forces from Mordor, along with Easterling help, took Ka Andros and set up a blockade in the Norian to stop Rohan coming south. We know these forces outnumbered the Rohirrim, so it seems like there could have been as many as 10,000 orcs there. During the Battle of the Black Gate, we know that the host of the West, numbering a little under 6,000, was outnumbered by forces 10 times and more than 10 times their match, which is a direct quote from the book. So at the very minimum, there are 60,000 fighting for Sauron at the Battle of the Black Gate although this number also includes Easterlings and Haradrim. However, this doesn't mean Mordor was emptied, as during the last debate, Gandalf makes it clear that the Morgul army was merely a part of Sauron's strength. This heavily implies that Sauron's forces were many times that number. 
meaning the army at the Moranan could not have been the full might of Sauron's armies in Mordor. He very likely still had armies in Adun, across the plateau of Gogoroth, in Nern, in fortresses like Durthang, and of course Barad-dûr. It's an estimate, but I think a very safe estimate, that Zauron probably had forces in reserve several times that of the army that fought at the Moranan. All in all, I'd say Mordor itself was host to at least 200,000 orcs, and very possibly many more than that. Combining the forces of Minas Morgul, Dol Guldur, and Mordor, we get a figure of well over 300,000 orcs that are directly under Sauron's command. But Sauron's strength isn't just made up of orcs. A large part of it actually comes from the Easterlings and Sauphrons that are under his dominion. These men seem to be Sauron's elite fighting forces, often held in reserve, and when the battle goes against Sauron, these forces are usually the last of his forces to either quit the field or die fighting. In fact, a large part of Sauron's offensives against the West were actually carried out by his mannish allies, meaning he had a great deal of trust in them. So how many did they number? Let's start with the Easterlings. So, the Easterlings showed up in several places during the War of the Ring. They attacked Erebor and Dale in the north, and in the south they fought in large numbers in Anorian, the Pelennor Fields, and the Black Gate. We have zero clues for their numbers, so all of these numbers are merely educated guesses. In the north, I would guess the Easterling army would possibly be around 40,000. I've noticed on the Lord of the Rings wiki that the Battle of Dale has 200,000 Easterlings in the army strength column, and I've seen that number quoted in my comments a few times. I'd just like to point out that there is zero evidence that 200,000 Easterlings fought there, and that that number is way too large. In the south, I'm guessing around 3,000 Easterlings made up part of Mordor's blocking force in Anorian, and the rest of that army was made up of orcs. At the Pelennor Fields, the Easterlings weren't one of the larger participants, and were held in reserve for much of the battle, so I'm guessing their number wasn't that high, probably around 5,000. And at the Black Gate, the Easterlings were described as being an army, which leads me to believe there was at least 10,000 of them at a minimum, but I'm thinking the number might be around 20,000. Overall, you get around 70,000 Easterlings fighting for Sauron during the War of the Ring. Next we have the Haradrim, where I'll also be including the men of Far Harad and the Variags of Khand. The Haradrim fought extensively in Gondor and at the Pelennor Fields, and they fought in Philion on multiple occasions and at the Black Gate. We actually know at least 18,000 Haradrim fought at the Pelennor Fields, as we know they thrice outnumbered the Rohirrim, which is also a direct quote from the book. And more of them were held in reserve, alongside the men of Far Harad and the Variags of Khand. So it's likely that the entirety of the Sauron forces at Pelennor Fields numbered around 25,000. However, Harad also fought extensively in Gondor's fiefdoms, often aided by the Corsairs. We don't know how many they were, but considering they had penetrated as far as Lynn here, I'd guess at least another 20,000 fought in Gondor south. On two different occasions, Haradrim was subject to ambushes in Aphelion, once by Faramir and once by Aragorn, so it's probable that they also lost several thousand in those fights. And finally, their force at the Black Gate, although probably still larger than the host of the West, probably wasn't as large as the Easterling force due to Harad's distance, so I'm putting that number at 10,000. Overall, I'm guessing around 60,000 or so Haradrim and other Sauphrons fought during the War of the Ring. And last, we get the Corsairs of Umba. The Corsairs fought alongside the Haradrim in southern Gondor, taking Pelagir and attempting to take Lynn here. They are described as having 50 great ships and smaller vessels beyond count. In a throwback to my first video, I said that the larger Corsair ships were described either as being like galleys or dromons, which from our own history could carry as many as 400 men. Using the logic that half of those on board are slaves who are manning the oars, we get as many as 10,000 Corsairs. There might be more or less slaves, so that number could be as many as 15,000. There's also the smaller vessels, plus those Corsairs that had split off from the main fleet and assailed Lynn here. So, at a minimum, there were probably at least 15,000 Corsairs of Umbar, and probably a maximum of around 20,000. Alright, so what are the final numbers? Sauron's own orcish armies numbered above 300,000 at the very least, and possibly number far more than that. Sauron's Easterling allies bring around 70,000 to the fight, his Haradrim and Sauron allies bring around 60,000, and his Corsair allies bring 20,000 at most. So that's an extra 150,000 soldiers at fought for Sauron, bringing the total strength of his armies up to around 450,000, and possibly as much as 500,000. If we calculate the full strength of the West, that being of the Elves, Dwarves of Erebor, Men of Gondor, Rohan, Dale, and other small peoples, 
we get a force of around 60,000, maybe a little more. In other words, Sauron outnumbered the Free Peoples almost 10 to 1. He had an impenetrable fortress in Mordor, and he had numerous allies to call upon from the vast lands of the South and East. Suddenly, it all makes sense why the West needed to destroy the One Ring to win the battle. Thank you for watching. I hope the numbers are to your satisfaction. I think I had a larger room for error for these numbers, but that doesn't mean I didn't stress a little over trying to get them to a level where people would consider them accurate. I didn't want to wave my hand and say that Sauron's armies were simply a million strong, but I wanted to make sure they firmly fit into the area of being too strong to be defeated by conventional arms. So thank you again, stay well, and remember, if you outnumber the enemy 10 to 1, you're a real moron if you still manage to blow it.